How's it going, card fighters? This is Takashi from Team Peer Pressure here with my Gold Paladin deck profile. So, for starters, pun intended, uh, I'll start with Corona Gold Liberator. When another one of your units replaced on Rearguard from the deck, for you Vanguard's Allegiant, this unit gets plus three until end of turn. He has the exact same skill as one of the great ones that I'll explain later on in the video, and he's great for setting up powerful numbers when he's in the back row. So, on for the grade threes, because that's pretty much the focal point of this deck. I run uh, three copies of Immerse Army Liberator Coil, uh, Counter Blast 2, and Persona Blast, either he or the Legion Mate. This units in Legion look at the top four cards, search for up to two cards. They are not specific to Liberators. Call them separate rear guards, put the rest on the bottom of the deck, and they get plus five. Now, this unit attacks a Vanguard, he does get plus two until the end of the battle, which sets up um, ridiculous plays if it happens that you get Quill, Aglaveo, even Bruno or Coronagall, if you, for some ungodly reason, or bottom deck gear Chronicle, um, if that ever happens. So he's great for setting up, you know, different plays. He might be slightly expensive, but he's still worth it when it comes down to um, optimizing your field. I also run three copies of Lewis Flame Liberator Prominence Court. Now you guys are probably wondering, hey, why aren't you running Glare? Well, I don't have him yet. I will eventually. Um, his Vanguard skill when you unit with the same name as the unit Vanguard is placed on Rearguard from the deck if he's in Legion, uh, he gets plus three in a crit until on the turn. Also, you counter blast one, retire one of your Rearguards, look at the top four, call a Liberator to uh, Rearguard, doesn't have to be open, and bottom deck with on the rest of the cards, and it's only once per turn. I'm going to use this term a lot, it's like opening Pandora's box with this deck. You counter blast, you call something, and effects go off, things get powered up, your opponent gets scared. Case in point. <laughs> and I run two copies of uh, Bluish Fang Liberator Percival. Percival would be the, uh, the trial deck guy. And um, when he legions, you get a free superior call from the top four cards of the deck. And it does have to be to an open rear guard. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to set up your field. And uh, when this unit attacks a vanguard, it gets plus two until the end of the battle. So there's a lot of superior calling in the grade threes. So again, just keep in mind the amount of uh, counter blasts and things that you have in order to make sure that you can uh, set up your field accordingly. Since you brought it up, uh, Prominence Glare, mm -hmm. uh, his skill is counter blast one, discard a bluish flame. Uh, if he's in Legion, he gets plus one critical and you cannot guard with grade ones or higher. Right. As well as the same superior call skill. Um, where you retire a unit and right. superior call something. Right. Um, it's considered one of the best legions for golds, and if you have it, it's really a good card to run. I agree. Definitely. Um, reason I'm not running him is he's like 25, almost 30 bucks. Yeah. Um, if it just so happens that I come across him, I'm gonna run him no questions asked, period. Um, he's a great, um, he's a great finisher, which is something that golds are severely lacking in. We may have the um, amount to, you know, superior call things, but being able to just close out games is going to be a little hard. So Glare definitely picks up the slack in that area. Um, On to the grade twos. I run four copies of Oath Liber, um, Oath Liberator Aglavale, who is the uh, Legion mate for Percival and Prominence Core. This dude does so much work. Counter Blast 1, when he's placed on rear guard, does not have to be from the deck, this could be from hand. And you have a Liberator Vanguard, pay the cost, look at the top three, uh, search for Liberator, call it to an open rear guard, and bottom deck the rest of the cards. Again, it's Pandora's box, especially when Aglaveil comes out on the field. You put him here, you Counter Blast 1, you call a Bruno, and things get real. Alright, so the next great tool in this lineup is, uh, Sword Principal Liberator Magnus. Now, I've been praying for a card like this to come for about a good year. Uh, Lapier Shooter was probably one of the best uh, grade two gold paladins to come out, and Magnus essentially is his spiritual successor for Liberators. Uh, when he's placed on Rearguard from the deck and you have two or more Liberators in its original card name on your Vanguard Circle, so essentially if your Vanguard's in Legion or if Stride's going on. Look at the top three cards from your deck, Search for Liberator, call it the rear guard, it does not have to be open, and put the rest in the bottom of the deck under any order. Now, as an added bonus, if you happen to superior call a bluish flame, which are only grade threes, mind you, you get to bounce the card back to your hand, which means you can set up for stride, you can set up for legion, or whatever you need to do next turn. 
beautiful card, and I'm glad that he came out in um, the Winter Fighters collection. I was able to pick a couple of them up out of packs and um, order a couple more. So um, he's a pretty good card to have, and I'm very glad to you know, have him as a part of the Gold Paladin family. And for the next one, we have three copies of Shower Liberator Traherne. I still don't understand why he's a Shower Liberator. Like, for the love of God, is he like a janitor or something in the United Sanctuary? I don't get it. But when this unit is placed on Rigor from your deck, if your Vanguard's in Legion, search, um, choose up to two of your other units and they get plus three until end of turn. He's good for setting up uh, different plays. And he's um, he typically would be in your hand to try to set up for uh, Coil's play if you don't have a copy of himself. But he's not bad when he's called. Um, you give Aglavale or another one of your boosters plus three, and you know you push for more numbers, which means your opponent has to guard for more, and you'll be happier in the long run. And now for the only GB1 unit in my entire deck. Holy Mage Pro, the Amber Clone, Counter Blast 1, which unit attacks with Vanguard. If he's boosted, look at the top three cards of your decks, um, search up the one, and call it Revere Guard. Doesn't have to be open, I'm gonna put great emphasis on that, and shuffle your deck. Probably last time I'm gonna say this Pandora's freaking box. If you call Pro and you have three Counter Blasts, you call an Aglaveo, you Counter Blast 1, you call more things. Your field is going to look beautiful. It could be a case where Kagero just wipes your field and you're like, oh man, what do I do? And then you call Pu, you refill your entire field, and things are lovely. Beautiful card to have. Get them, please. They're great. So, I know you mentioned earlier in your grade 3 split that just uh, the decks have been counterblast heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about running cards such as Saphir and the uh, Tac Turn Liberator Brennius? Okay, so for Saphir. Only reason that I do not run Saphir, he's not a Liberator, and a lot of the cards that I have to use that Superior Call, with the exception of maybe two or three, not counting the strides, have to call Liberators on that. If he, for some reason, became, you know, a part of the second regular army, if he became one of the Liberators, I would so totally run him, like, no questions asked, I'd do it. Um, for Brace, um, you know, when it comes to him, I've thought about it. I've placed great, great thought into running Brennius, and I might just do it. Um, he isn't that expensive, so I probably would order him within like the next couple weeks or so. On to the great ones. I run just one copy, a solitary copy, of uh, Fast Chase Liberator Joseph. You are Soul Blast, a Liberator, special Soul Blast. <laughs> Uh, when this unit is placed on Rigor from your deck and you have a Liberator in its card name, um, as your Vanguard, you would draw a card. Pretty decent for trying to generate hand advantage, but um, I might be phasing him out a little bit later on for another card, but we'll see what happens. But um, I can place him in the back row if, uh, if necessary, or I could put him in the front in order to push for more numbers if there are triggers involved. Or it's really fun to where you know, your opponent doesn't write a great one, and then you just rush the crap out of them. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. Next card, I run two copies of Physical Force Liberator Zorin. Now this guy is way under the radar when it comes to certain decks because I never see him ever. Uh, when his unit is placed on Rear Guard from your deck and you have a Go Pilot and Vanguard, you push him to soul, look at the top three cards, search for Liberator, call it to Rear Guard, does not have to be open, and you bottom deck the rest. Great card, beautiful for setting up plays, or if you just want to keep him in the back or as a booster, you know, if you're that desperate for cranking out numbers, go for it. But Zorn is great for setting up your um, your Holy Flame plays when you stride. He's great for setting up your Aglaville plays, or if it just so happens that you have you know the full field of um, Bruno or you know Corona Gold clones in the back row, it just gets you at least uh, six thousand points of extra um, extra power. It's a great card. I run two copies of Gorba Duke, uh, the stride enabler for Gurguit, and that's literally all he is. Um, this card only gets great plus two, and you stride. If I had Gurguitz, which I don't know why I'd run him at Liberators, but if I had him, I'd run him at four. But that's just not the case here. He's, um, I don't know. I have also thought about um, subbing him out too, strictly because nine times out of ten, I'd probably have a grade three to stride with, but we'll see what happens. I run four copies of Light Formation Liberator Erdre. 
Now, you're probably thinking, why doesn't he have marks? Well, when I ordered him about, you know, a year and a half ago, Erdre was only $6, whereas Mark was like 10 So I was like, nah fam, I'm not doing that. Um, Erdre does the exact same thing as Mark, and the perk of not having a GPG, despite the fact they're really, really viable, is you can protect literally anything. If Puil gets all the hate that I expect him to get whenever I play him, I can just guard him and be like, no, you're not touching him. No, he's, he's my buddy, no. Um, you know, when it comes to your Vanguard, nope. When it comes to any of your Vanguards whatsoever, nope. Instead of, you know, the perk of being able to uh, unflip or, you know, draw a card or things of that nature, he's just good as an all-around defender. And last but not least, my favorite grade one in the game, May Rain Liberator Bruno. Oh. My. God. When your other gold pattern is placed on rear from your deck and you have your Liberator in its card name, it's plus three. The exact same skill as my starter. If it just so happens that you have like the Holy Trinity of Brutos on the field and you happen to superior call like five or six units, you know, you're sitting at plus 15 to plus 18 for Bruno. You literally can just put him up front and say attack. <laughs> he's, he's great for either setting up uh, different plays with your Vanguard, your rear guards, you literally can just go all out. Uh, you superior call even once. He's a 10k booster, which is great for getting past um, pesky, you know, 15k guards or things of that nature. I swear to God, if he was a person, I'd probably hug him. And now on to other triggers. I own four copies of Flame of Victory. Uh, you put him to soul, uh, choose a go paladin, and he gets plus three until end of turn. Great card, if it just so happened that there was a Liberator variant of Flame of Victory, I'd run him in a heartbeat. Um, there's another crit that I've honestly been thinking about running, uh, it's uh, Barbatric, he's the uh, the Bluish Flame. Uh, when he's Superior called, you bottom deck, look at the top four cards, you search for a Bluish Flame, add him to hand. Great card, it's just the fact that whenever I try to order him, he's always out of stock. So I'll get him eventually, we'll see what happens when I do. I run two copies of Strike Liberator and two copies of Isus. Um, I do have a teaching deck with a couple of the copies of uh, Strike Liberator. I just wanted a little bit of variety in my uh, crit triggers, but they're vanilla triggers, so they don't really do all that much except damage your opponent more and make them feel sad. <laughs> now, probably for one of the best grade zeros in the game, I run Catch Call Liberator. If you wanted to see a card that opens up ridiculous plays, Catch Call is probably the one that goes to you. Cute little puppy, isn't he? Um, when you put him on the bottom of the deck, when he's superior card from the deck, you look at the top three, call something that isn't Catch Call, make sure you know that it cannot be himself. Uh, you call it um, the cards to an open rear guard and shuffle your deck. So, for instance, Aglaveil. Oh man, Catch Call. Oh man, bottom deck. Goes for, you know, another Aglaveil. Goes into Catch Call. Goes into Bruno. You've literally just refilled your field, you know. Say you've got that Narukami player that just doesn't like you very much, or that Kagero player that doesn't like you very much, and you go ahead and you Legion. Things are ridiculous once you go into catch goal. And last but not least with the triggers, I run four heals. Nothing special, they heal, they make me happy, and it feels really glory, you know, when you're about to hit six and then you clutch heal. I wish there were Sunny Smile clones or Lozenge Megas clones and golds, but that just doesn't happen because they're broke. It's called Room 16 Stand Liberator. Bruh. <laughs> and now on for the strides. I run two copies of Fast Shades Golden Knight Cat Bell, the chunky soup of the gold paladins, if you will. Um, when this unit attack hits a vanguard, look at the top five, um, search up the, um, for the one card, call it a rearguard, shuffle your deck, and you get plus two. We all know that on hit strides are kind of the thing in vanguard now. Every single clan under the sun has one of these, and it's pretty much standard to run them in any installation of the deck that you have. And he does set up pretty nice plays because it doesn't matter what I call, and it doesn't have to be to an open rear. 
I run two copies of Golden Dragon, Scourge Point Dragon. Cannot wait for him to come out in the start deck as a promo because I want to see his shiny awesomeness, but that's not why he's here. Um, when your unit is placed on rigor from the deck, that unit and this unit get plus five until end of turn. So every single time you superior call, he pseudo triggers with him and another unit. Great for pushing for numbers, great for pushing at advantage, and great for making your opponent cry. I run two copies of Golden Dragon Spear Cross Dragon. Now, I will admit I'm guilty as charged for saying this card sucked at one point. Strictly because um, when you have to call units, you have to call them to an, a separate open rear guard. Now, understanding that if there happened to be that pesky Narukami player, or something of that nature, um, and my rear guards are open, typically, uh, Spear Cross would be my second stride. You'd have Counter Blast 2, you flip up a copy of himself, and he's placed on, Van um, placed on Vanguard Circle. If the number of face-up cards in your g is one or more, look at the top five cards of your deck, and you superior call as many cards as you have face-up uh, G-units. So if it just so happens that these two fields are completely empty, I can just put him right there and your opponent's like, well, I didn't do anything much. So it's a pretty good card for opening up, um, you know, card advantage or things like that on your field. And now for the uh, piece de resistance of my strides, I have two copies of Bluish Flame, True Rear, Holy Flame. Holy crap, this card's good. Uh, Counter Blast 1 and you flip up a um, card from your G-Zone. Doesn't have to be himself, but preferably it should be. If you have a hard card with Liberator in its name for each face of Holy Flame in your G-Zone, look at the top three cards of your deck, search up to one, call it the rear guard, um, put the rest of your cards in your drop zone. Nope, you have to put it in the drop zone. And that unit gets plus two until end of turn. So he sets up Legion, you know, for when you're um, going into another unit to re-Legion, put things back into your deck, or uh, things of that nature. You know, he sets up your Aglaveil plays, your Magnus plays, you know, all that good stuff. Great card to have, and I would love to run him at four. I just can't right now because he's like 10 bucks. So, you know, he's he's a work in progress, definitely. If you were to open up, uh, get two more, what would you remove from your stride deck? Campbell. Campbell? Yeah. Just something cool, so if you do run him at four, you're essentially looking at the top nine and calling three. Yep. For counter plus one. Yep. It's hilarious, actually. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the, uh, the gold pound deck profile. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Hope everybody enjoyed the banter. And as always, you know, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, this has been Takeshi from Team Peer Pressure. Fight on, guys. Have fun. Stay positive. Take it easy.